Has there been any changes to Rule 2 for recreational flyers lately? Last I looked, there were not really any CBOs out there to follow. Wow. Wow, we have a big update for them, right, Blunty? Are there any CBOs? Yes. Yeah, I linked them in chat um, and explained just so they would have it right away. But yeah, I am part of the FPV Freedom Coalition, and we are one of the four CBOs that are licensed to uh, by the FAA to give you safety guidelines that you are required to follow by the FAA. Um, you can pick any of them. Uh, FPV FC is one of them, FPV Freedom Coalition. We have our safety guidelines on our website. Um, also, uh, I believe it's right at the top. Oh, uh, there's a safety tab. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, there is um, the AMA has one, STEM plus C has one, and the Flight Test uh, Community Association has one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, what this means, and every time we talk about regulations, it causes a bit of a stink. Some people are like, ah, I don't want to hear about this. I'll try and keep it brief. But what this means is that uh, in order to have the veneer of legality... <laughs> You need to be able to say, if asked, I am flying under the safety guidelines of this organization. And it has to be one of the organizations, Blunty Link, which have been accepted as CBOs by the FAA. So if someone were to say to me, what CBOs safety guidelines do you fly under, Bardwell? I would say I fly under the safety guidelines of the FPV Freedom Coalition. And that would mean that as far as anybody knows, I follow all these rules when I fly. And people are like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to follow those rules. Hey, if you're from the FAA, check, turn off the live stream. Does anyone know whether you're actually following the rules? I don't know. Did you make a video of you blatantly not following the rules and then post it to the internet? Well, that was dumb. Don't do that. I, okay. I'll just add that um, because of the way Rule 2 is written, the safety guidelines basically are adopted as law. It's a way for them to make rules without making rules. So you mm -hmm. will find that when you review all four of the safety guidelines, the FPV Freedom Coalition has the least lax safety guidelines that we were possibly able to do. We went back and forth with the FAA for a long time to make sure that we could get as many exceptions as possible in mm -hmm. there. Believe me, anything in there that is limiting to you uh, that is not in the rule already uh, is because we were forced to by the FAA. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we basically we did the best we could to get you the least rules possible. So what I would say, as the Blunty speaks for the FPV Freedom Coalition, and so can't say some things that maybe he thinks, or, but I will say the things I think without putting words in his mouth in any way. Uh, if you are in a situation where you must be held accountable for following the rules, like if you're doing a 107 operation or if you're flying at a public uh, event where there's potential that the FAA would show up. And, and the FAA, FAA has shown up at a couple of events, maybe one. I, I heard of one specifically, and they were like, hey, everybody, you got your, you got your registration number on your drone? Huh? Just checking up on you. It's not likely to happen, but if you were worried that it might happen, then you would want to familiarize yourself with these rules and all the other expectations, and you would want to follow them. And the rest of the time, when you're flying in your backyard and no one sees what you're doing, hmm, do you have a spotter? Well, hmm, you know, it's up to you. Um, I feel like, the, oh. oh, that's a realistic take that I think a lot of people can appreciate. Go ahead, Blunty. There was also one other question in chat. Dave S. says, is trust another one? No, trust is a separate rule on the recreational rules. Trust is a, uh, there's a bunch of people who can distribute the trust test. You go take it at one of their websites and you get a certificate for trust, but that is a separate requirement from picking a CBO and knowing that CBO's rules. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm a firm believer that you should know what the rules are. And then you, as a, as a free, responsible adult, should decide when and how to follow the rules. I like to say that there are, when I, when I go on a long road trip, I set my cruise control eight miles above the speed limit. Because I think that's how fast is safe for me to drive. And I think that's, you know, balances my priority of getting there quickly while still uh, not getting a speeding ticket. If I thought I could set it 12 miles over and not get a speeding ticket, I might do that. That's just a decision I'm making, and someday if I get a speeding ticket, I will accept that consequence. Likewise, 
someday I might decide that it's the right thing to do to fly without a spotter. And I might decide that that risk was acceptable and that the safety and so forth was all balanced out and every person sort of makes those decisions for themselves. That's what I would say. x 61 fpv also asked, do you need trust for sub-250? Yes, you also need to pick a CBO for sub-250. The only mm -hmm. thing that sub-250 exempts you from is re registration. Mm -hmm. And by and proxy remote, of registration, it remote restricts ID. you. It removes remote ID, but that's because you don't have to register. Yep, 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 yep. Um, cool. See, Blunty, it's you and me. You're, you're, you're like. You remember Goofus and Gallant from Highlights for Boys? <laughs> yes. You're, you're Gallant. You're giving all the right answers, and I'm Goofus, and I'm like, hey guys, let's go over here and break the rules. <laughs> Except I would never say that because that would be irresponsible. <laughs> okay. 